All right, let's learn a bit about um, networking with AWS. So what I want you to do is go to the top and type in VPC, which stands for Virtual Private Cloud. And what we'll do is set up our own VPC. It's not so important that you remember all the little bit of details, but you get through this so that you can remember the major components. So what I'll do is create a new VPC. I'm gonna call this my VPC uh, tutorial. And here I'm gonna say 10.0.0.0 forward slash 16. The reason you're wondering why I'm doing that, if we go to X, Y, X, Y, Z here, um, this tells you the size of it. So I go here and I put 16. So you can see we have a lot of room. If we do 24, it takes up, it, it, it's smaller, see? So this is basically the size of it, right? The empty blocks over here. So we're gonna have a lot of room. So we do 10, 0, 0, 0, 16. We don't need IPv6. We're gonna go ahead and create that. And once we have that, we can go ahead and create a subnet, which we will need. So we're gonna choose our VPC. We'll go down here and say my subnet tutorial. And we'll choose the first AZ. You can leave it blank, it'll choose it random. And then we need to choose a block that is smaller than the current one. So 16 would be definitely, um, uh, well, 16 is the size that we have now. So we can match that size, but 10.0.0.0 forward slash 24 would be absolutely smaller, okay? So we go ahead and create that subnet. And so that is all set up now. Um, let's see if our route table is hooked up. So our route table says where it links to, and it says to local, so it's not going anywhere. And that's because we need to attach a uh, internet gateway that allows us to reach the internet. So if we go over here and create a new internet gateway, we'll say my IGW, and we'll go ahead and create that. And what we'll do is associate that with our VPC we created here, okay? And so now that we have the internet gateway attached, we want that subnet to make its way out to the internet. So if we go to the route table, we can edit the uh, route table association here. I like how it keeps on showing me this as if I don't know what I'm doing, um, but I do. And so this would change that particular association, but I want to add to that route table so I thought when I clicked that, it would allow me to add more, but apparently I gotta go to route tables over here. And I'm looking for the one that is ours. We can see that it's over here. We could even name it if we wanted to, like my route table. Notice when we apply uh, 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 names, it's actually just applying a tag. See over here, it's always what that is. So we'll go over to routes and we want to edit the routes and we want to add a route. And we want this to go to zero, 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 and we're gonna choose the internet gateway, okay? We're gonna say save changes. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to reach the internet. Um, and so what I wanna do is go back to subnet. I was just curious about this. I've never used this before. Um, so it looks like we could just choose some options here. I'm not too concerned about that, but I assume like that's used for debugging. Azure's had those kind of services for a long time. And so AWS has been starting to add those so you can easily debug your network, which is nice. So we have a subnet. The subnet uh, can reach the internet because there's a there's a, um, uh, an internet gateway and it's hooked up via the route table. One thing that matters is will it assign a public IP address? Um, so that is something that we might want to look into. It's not the default subnet, which is totally fine. So it says auto assign is no. So that might be something that you might want to change. So here we would go to edit the route table association. No, it's not there. They changed it on me. It used to be part of the uh, setup instructions. You used to just check box it now and they moved it. Modify the auto assign. So we'll say enable. So that means it's always gonna give it a public IP address on launch. And uh, while we're here, I'm just gonna double check if I have any elastic IPs that I did not release. Okay, just double checking here. And so, this is all set up and we should be able to launch a um, EC2 now within our, our new VPC. So I'll go over here to EC2, okay? And I'm gonna launch a new instance. I'm gonna say Amazon Linux 2. We're gonna choose this tier here. And now what we should be able to do is select that. And that is our subnet there, okay? Go ahead and launch that. I don't care if we use a key whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch that there. Okay, we'll go back. 
And so there you go, it is launching. So we created our VPC and we launched uh, in it no problem whatsoever. So hopefully that is pretty darn clear. Um, so yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let that launch because I wanna show you security groups. So within AWS, you can set security groups and NACLs and that's going to allow or deny access based on stuff. And when we launched this EC2 instance, it has a default security group that was assigned. We could have created a new one, but what I might want to do is create myself a new security group here, okay? And you can end up with a lot really fast. Like here's a bunch and I can't even tell what's what. So like there's a bunch for load balancers and things like that. And so I might just go ahead and delete a bunch of these because I cannot tell what is going on here. And, um, We'll delete these security groups. And sometimes they won't let you delete them because they're associated with something like a network interface or something. All right, but um, we need to find out which one we're using right now. So the one that we are using is the Launch Wizard 4. So we'll go into here. And I don't know if you can rename them after they've been created. I don't think so, which is kind of frustrating because if you want to rename it, it's like, I don't want that to be the name. So what's interesting is you can go here and you can edit the routes, uh, the rules, sorry, the inbound rules and the outbound rules. And so here it's open on port 22. So that allows us to SSH in. We could drop this down and choose different things. So if we want people to access a website, we go port 80 and we say from anywhere, IPv4.6. So now anyone can access it. Um, you might want to do something like give it access to Postgres that runs on port 5432, things like that. Um, could be something else, like maybe you need to connect to Redshift, that's on that port. You can go ahead and save those rules. We're just going to say uh, from anywhere, you can even say my IP, so maybe only I'm allowed to connect to it, right? And so you added inbound rules. You don't really ever have to touch outbound rules. It's set for all traffic, so it's stuff that's leaving uh, the that there. One interesting thing to note about uh, security groups is that you don't have a deny option, right? So let's say you only wanted a particular IP address. You only wanted, um, let's say, what's my IP? My IP address. So that is my IP address. And let's say I wanted to block it, right? So I go here and I say, okay, I want to block uh, on all TCP. I want to block this number, right? But I can't do that. I, all I can say is I allow this number. So in order to do it, I would have to enter everything but this number in here. And you can enter ranges in uh, with like these forward slashes and stuff like that. But you would imagine that'd be really hard because you have to start and go like, you'd have to start and go through every single IP address in the world to get it out of here. And that's almost impossible. And that's the key thing I want you to remember about security groups. Um, so that's security groups. And there's also knackles. Knackles, um, they're associated with subnets, so they probably show up under VPC. I rarely touch Knackles, rarely ever have to. Um, I mean, they're great tools, but you know, for me, I, I just don't ever need them. So Knackles are associated with subnets. So we can go here and try to see my subnet tutorial. So when we created our subnet, we got a Knackle for free, and we can set inbound and outbound rules. And so here, here is where we could say, okay, I wanna add a new rule. And I want to, and I want to make the rule number 150. You always do these in hundreds, okay, or the power of tens, so that you can move them around easily. And I can say all traffic that comes from this IP address. I'm gonna put the forward slash zero. That just means a single IP address. And I say deny, right? And so now, uh, this at my address, I can't access that EC2 instance, okay? If I try to go, there's nothing running on the server, but if I was to try to use it, I wouldn't be able to do it. And and this applies to anything for that subnet. It's not for a particular instance, it's for anything in that subnet. So hopefully that is, is pretty clear there. Um, but that's pretty much all you really need to know. I mean, there's lots of other stuff like network firewalls, all these other things. It gets pretty complicated. Um, it's well beyond what we need to learn here, but uh, what we'll do is tear down that EC2 instance. Okay, we'll terminate that. And once that instance is destroyed, we can get rid of our security group and a bunch of other stuff. And there's always a bunch of these darn things. So we'll say delete. Uh, one security group associated. 
So we go here. This is the one we are using, but I want to get rid of all these other ones. Okay, if I go here, it could be because like of inbound rules. So see this one, because you can reference another security group within a security group. So I'm just going to go save that there. Say any my IP there. Whoops. It's set to NS, uh, NFS. So that might have been set up for our access point. Or I could just delete it. That would probably be easier. Okay. So that's one that's kind of, of a pain. So I'm just looking for rules that might be referencing other security groups. To get rid of them. Okay, let's try this again. We'll go ahead and delete. I'm leaving the um, I'm leaving the uh, the defaults alone because those come with your VPCs and you don't want to get rid of those. So it won't let me delete this one. So I'm going to go edit that rule, delete it, save it. You might not have this kind of cleanup to do. It just might be me here, you know. Um, outbound, inbound. Let's try this again here. Delete. And I'll open this one up. Must be this one that is referencing the other one. I'm just going to delete the rule. And this is something that's just kind of frustrating with AWS, but it's just how it is where sometimes it's hard to get rid of uh, resources because you have to click through stuff. So it's not always a clean, you might have like lingering resources. And this isn't going to cost us anything, but it's just the fact that um, that it just makes things harder to see what you're doing, you know? This last one really doesn't want to go away. I'm just trying to delete all the rules out of here, get rid of it. Can I delete this one now? One group associated, and it will not show me what it's talking about. Okay, here it is. Um, ah, okay, this is referencing it. I think it was the one, it was an old one, I don't know what this is. We'll go down here and we'll go here and delete that. And while I've been cleaning all these up, now we can go over to our inst instance, make sure that it's terminated. It is good because if our instance is not terminated, we cannot destroy the VPC. Uh, prior, the VPC could not be destroyed unless you detach the internet gateway. I wonder if it's going to still complain about that. We'll say yes. It actually looks like it includes it in the cleanup. Type delete here. There we go. So we're all good. We're all cleaned up. There you are.